Hey, Jeannie Lynch, welcome back to my channel. So whether people are listening to this on the Intuitive Podcast, Meshed Media, YouTube, we truly do appreciate the audience. Very excited to introduce my next guest to you, Linda Lang, and we're going to get into a pretty deep conversation around this idea of healing. Healing where we are in the world today, too. And then, you know, should you look back or only look forward? And what about these ancient modalities that are still around there? I got Louise Hay up, and again, I'm not dogging her when I say that, but the healings of the past, are they working for the healings of the future? And by the way, the future sounds scary, right? As we ascend into this fifth dimension where they talk a lot about just energy and not having a physical body. Hmm, what does that mean? We're gonna be diving into that conversation today and I'm gonna peel it, push it, explore it with my host and my guest. This is her on the other side of the mic and her and I have similar YouTube channels in the sense that we, are, we attract other healers and we share their modalities out to the world so we have a lot to share so stay looking stay watching stay listening that fun interview it's coming up next linda yay so excited you're here today and i just did a beautiful little introduction to you just an overview of our intentions today as we dive into this work and I jokingly said in the intro, you're on the other side of the mic. So I love that. And I really want to highlight you today. You do so much for so many people all over the world, formatting them, telling others about their practice. And I want to gesture that back to you today and give you a chance to show your light and shine. And I also want to have a pretty controversial or a fun pullback on the whole idea of healing for 2022. So are you ready to do this? please share with me and share with our listeners and our watchers um, about you and how you kind of got into this, your modality of healing. Well, first of all, Jeannie, I want to thank you for inviting me on your show. I have such a deep respect for you and the message that you radiate out into the world. So I am honored to be on your show. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. You have this backdrop story to how you got into healing and it might involve a near death or almost dying with can I don't really know the detail of the story so please give give my audience a sense of what that story is because all healers start with their own healing right yeah uh, yeah absolutely um I do think that's true I will say that my whole life even as a young young child I was always interested in mysticism, astrology, psychic ability, spirits, that kind of thing. So this tangent wasn't terribly new to me, okay. yet using it for actual physical healing was very new to me. So when I was 22, I was very flu flukily, if that's such a word, uh, diagnosed with a very aggressive cancer. It's something I found. The doctor didn't even think it was cancer, sent it um, you know, off to be biopsied. It turned out to be this like horrendous thing where they gave me a year to live or perhaps a 50% chance oh my gosh. If, uh, for, to live for five years if I have my leg amputated. And I was 22, I was married with a young baby. It just like decimated my world, right? It was like, how could this be? I didn't smoke, I didn't drink. I, you know, I lived a pretty clean life. Had a teeny weeny weeny, weeny little lump underneath a uh, muscle behind my knee. Okay. And if I hit that knee, you know, bumped it on something, I wouldn't be able to stand on it for a few moments. And so when I went to the doctor and she could feel it was a little bit bigger and, you know, you go down that whole yeah. line and then you have this incredible, unbelievable surprise that's maybe not, you know, something that you are expecting. I will say that it was a, a huge gift for me in my life, but not... Maybe it wasn't a gift. It brought many gifts. And it's something I wish everyone would 
be able to experience those gifts without all of the uh, trauma and I'm going to have to say that again because I love the way you said it. I want to hear that again for my audience too. You said it wasn't a gift, but it brought me the gift. And I just I'm going to do a slide on that. That is so beautiful and so, so important too to recognize. My mom said when my daughter passed, do not let this event define you. I was like, what does that mean? And it, 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 it is a little bit of that, you know, that gift and what we have to offer is more probably the better way, like you're saying. So I love that. Keep yeah. going. Okay. So it you're gave 22. me goosebumps. You're 22. You get this. You're already in the spiritual kind of realm and world. And so what's your first step to, to your own healing then? Uh, reaching up to spirit, first of all. Um, you know, very uh, personally, not reaching out to healers or or anyone else. I needed to do that kind of direct connection. And then I started having some very interesting experiences, like reoccurring dreams, like uh, I had a visitation. I had like insights and wisdom just pop into my mind. And this happened probably for at least two years, if not longer. So I refused the surgery and, um, and the whole medical perspective at that point and really connected with my body, its wisdom, my spiritual self. And then I started uh, my exploration, let's say. So it sounds like, and here's the, here's the question. Did you have faith at the time that you had the ability to heal yourself? Did you have a knowing, you know, how do you put that much trust with your life? Right. From, and again, we're not dogging doctors, people, right. We understand, especially right now with COVID, how important it is to have the medical system out there, but take me through that, that bridge that you got to, to, cause I would like to get on that bridge where I'm putting so much faith into my ability to heal myself. So take us there, because I think a lot of people would benefit from hearing that right now. That's a really, really good question. And it's, it's a, a very personal, it's a very personal connection that you have to your own inner wisdom, your own trust within yourself, your own trust in a higher power that there's a purpose and the greatest knowing was a visitation that I had that showed me how much love there was for me in the universe for all of us there's so much more love than we can imagine that our conscious mind can even comprehend just when you think that there is only love, more love would come and it would be like waves and waves and waves of love. And it was just like this life was so almost insignificant in the grand scheme of who we are and what we are part of. So Oh, can, I, can I add to that? Because I'm just so connecting yeah. to you right now. And I think it will get us into the healing aspect in the conversation we want to have too. Right after my daughter passed, um, I had a cousin call who had also lost his daughter. And he was, you know, down here in the Bible Belt, Baptist, Jesus died for us and all that's beautiful. Okay, I'm not dogging any religion, but it was just he was so advanced with his understanding and knowledge and his faith and all that. And he said to me over the phone with the Southern draw, he said, Janie, there's just one thing you need to know. It's just a moment of time. Like you get to be with your daughter to eternity, you know? And I remembered at the time, and this is where we can get into the healing. It was like, it was terrifying. You know, that, that my daughter's life was so insignificant. And I know that's not what you just said, but, but today I understand that so clearly, you know, so I love that you're bringing that up too. So you had that, when you say it was a visit, was it a visit from God? Was it a visit from a past relationship, a a spirit guide who, who visited you? It was a visit from a beautiful golden orb that came through the ceiling it was 
pitch black in the room I was in. I was in bed and I was crying because I was scared, right? So, and I had just uh, prayed for strength. That's the prayer that I um, put out to the universe because this is what was ahead of me. And, you know, you have to kind of deal with what's on your plate, right? And this beautiful golden orb came through the ceiling and it stopped right at my nose. And then it went up the cartilage of my nose into my third eye. And it was inside myself that I had this dimensional shift, I'll say, that I was taken to this place where, you know, this, there was no this life, earth. There were, they were, it was like we were all drops in the ocean and these beautiful waves that just brought so much peace and so much nurturing. It was just unbelievable. And when it dissipated, I cried again because it felt like I fell out of the Garden of Eden. I love that. So out of body experience, would you define it? Or would you say, no, it was more of a journey? I would actually say it was in the body, that it's a portal or um, dimension accessible inside the body. Since then, my guides have shown me a couple of other portals in the body um, that we can use to access these like incredible spiritual planes. I love that we're having this discussion. I've always wanted to talk about this topic on my channel too, in the sense that I was having out of body experiences after, and of course the doctors would tell you I was disassociating and my mind couldn't handle the pain. And so I was hallucinating and they could have medicated me to get me back into my body. My spiritual coach at the time, my therapist basically was also an energy healer. She was like, Jeannie, these are out of body experiences. You're being taken somewhere. The scary thing is you're driving down the road when they're happening. Let's get you in your body. Let's teach you how to go on your own. And so like you, I've been to these other places, okay, that you can't even make up in a dream, right? Because dreams are all things that you've seen before. But I know for a fact what you're saying is that there's other realms out there and there's other experiences and you can't, you can't define it because there are no words. And I know that sounds a little cliche, but I know you know exactly what that means. I mean, how do you determine and t- take us through kind of like your toolbox? What do you do f- to help people heal right now? Well, one of the, th- the greatest skills that I bring to the table is my sensitivity to energy, my ability to listen. So I'm listening to the words that you use. I'm listening to the energy behind the words, I'm listening to the energy in the space. And I have this lovely system. Uh, I call myself an energy empath because like I can feel your throat chakra close. I can feel, you know, your heart open wide. I have an eye that will tear when you're carrying a lot of grief or if you're really happy, if your spirit is like, yes, yes. And It's interesting because that tear feels different. So I have this kind of built-in diagnostic tool, I guess I would say. And I use that when someone comes to determine which of my modalities would be most effective to kind of move the energy or to bring you a different perspective. And then I'll typically, I have a list of all my modalities and I'll run my finger down or I'll just get. Oh, stop love that so you have a list like in front of you when you're working with somebody and then you yeah. you, you scan it down and then you it calls and says stop here oh my oh, god oh the energy goes poof right you know so okay that's the one right oh i love that you were the first person in the world to ever say that i think you're the only person i know who even i love that Oh my God, that is huge. Because I wonder, like when I'm working with people, you know, where do I go? Like you say, breadcrumbs. I love that as an analogy. That is so cool. Okay, sorry, well, Linda. I was so excited to hear that again. It's all good. But, you know, the beauty of this is it keeps you out of your head. And oh my God, like, what do I have to do? You're not thinking. You're 
reading the energy. Keep going. So you get with people, you go down through your modalities, you find a way to work with them. Is there a, a few modalities right now and where we are in the world that you feel are, and I know this is so open for discussion because first off, any way of healing is healing, right? So I'm not dogging one modality over another. We're talking about you and how you're working with people currently. This could change six months from now. We could do part two of this and it might be a different answer. But take me to today and what you feel led to share as far as the modalities that you're working with that are having a lot of effect on helping people heal. We're gonna use the word water whisperer, which I know you wanna tell us about. So let's get into that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would like to say too that my, my guides, I have a lot of modalities because I like to learn and I like to explore and I like to incorporate aspects, incorporate aspects of certain modalities. Like I work with them in my own unique way, which probably most healers do, right? I, it's yeah. not, healing is not black and white that you have to do this, this and this. So the more wisdom that you have, the more knowledge you have, the more you can bring into your sessions. So um, what they did say to me is that any one modality, if you went deep enough into it and became a master of it, you know, could, could work miracles. I like to explore and bring, and bring a lot to the table. So partly for my own interest, right, and inspiration. So for me today, um, and actually probably for the last couple of years, I think some of the things I use the most, the thing that I use the most would be uh, my Huna shamanic training okay. and the beautiful diamond ray energy, which is what I use to restructure water. Sure. I have a couple okay. water healings on my YouTube channel that okay. people could bring a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a glass of wine, even any liquid to be restructured. It's, it's so amazing. It's just that, I mean, and how that happened is magic. It's just simply magic. I love that you're using the word magical to describe these different modalities. What are you currently looking for for guests and what's important for you who are going to be on your show exploring the mystical side of life? Share that with my audience so we can see if there's someone out there who would be interested. So, you know, I'm just really open. And as long as I can find that link to something spiritual, something mystical, something metaphysical, and something that will help people think differently about this reality, about their life, about what's possible for them, then, you know, I'm willing. Yeah. And, and my big caveat is that yes, there is room to, you know, promote your book or your website, but that's not what the conversation is about. Okay. The conversation is about sharing teaching, inspiring. And then if people are drawn to you, let them access you through your website, your books, your courses. Got it. Love that. Okay, we're moving on. Here's here. Here we go into the next aspect. I love the idea too of having a deep conversation about choosing the modalities and I loved your point about there's so many modalities out there and to explore all of them and use pieces of them. All that is such great news. So somebody's brand new, they're, they're watching this and they're thinking, yeah, I, I want to understand healing more and I need a healing or I'm a healer and I'm attracted because most of the people who watch our channels are healers, right? Take us to moving forward. Here we are. We're leaving the third D. We're skipping over the fourth. We're climbing into the fifth, right? What what should we be doing right now to be moving that energy? I know you're part of the whole light workers ascension and we're part of other groups that are part of that mission of bringing more light into the world, COVID being part of it, right? So take us there, help, help, let's help navigate that energy too. What would be some of your things that you would like to share with people about moving forward? Another can of worms. Yeah, it is. There's so much in there. So much in there, Dini, so much in there. So the first thing that I would like to say 
is that I would encourage you not to jump too far ahead to miss that fourth dimension. Great. To miss that fourth dimension because that is the dimension of the heart space and unconditional love. So three dimension is about your power. You can think of these dimensional shifts like chakras. Yeah, right? I just was going to go there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so we have not mastered by any stretch of the imagination, the energy of love, compassion. We have so much to learn there before we can move to the fifth dimension. I know there's a lot of spiritual teachers that are teaching that, you know, we're, we're going from the third to the fifth and that the fourth is like the Bardot state, which is that kind of in between like consciousness and unconsciousness sleep and awake and I had a guest on my podcast who uh, was a definite starseed he was so not from earth and he was an expert on the raw teachings oh, yeah. Yeah. channeled raw teachings yeah. and raw taught that that the chakras system is you know as above so below and that these dimensions are like the chakra system of the universe and it made sense to me although not all spiritual things do but when i told him about my experience of the visitation and the um the sixth chakra and i that light going into my my uh, third eye I didn't tell him that it went into my third eye. I only told him about the experience. And he said, oh, no, 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 that's not a fifth dimension. That's a sixth dimension experience. And that blew me away because it was in my third eye and he had no idea. That's amazing. Yeah. So it really made me rethink this uh, kind of you know jump on the fifth dimension bandwagon and great reminder the chakras right we they used to stay in the top three in your spiritual where you know sources and the rest of it and then but you need to be in a physical body to do a healing right and here we are in this dimension we came here to experience the body right and I loved my understanding when I learned the chakras too when you got to the heart center which was the center if this is in balance then they're it's tying the two together and then then we're really having the experience. So I want to go back to what you said because I think, you know, boy, that could be this video. Balance, love, everything in the heart. Don't skip over the fourth, you know, fifth. And everybody, I love your point. Everybody's so focused on getting out of where we are because we're in so much pain about this place where we are. I'm, I'm referring to COVID right now, but I know it's so much bigger than that. I love your idea of being in our body, bringing in more love, patience and self-love for ourselves and to others and compassion so that we can really move collectively, right? Wherever we're supposed to be. And I don't think like you're saying it ends with the fifth. So great reminder. Did I say that right? You said that, you said that beautifully. You said that beautifully. I would highly recommend that people stay present in their body our job as light workers is not to escape the third dimension but to bring the light here into this world and shine it for all people to help heal and and support this dimensional shift that humans are going through the earth is going through our whole reality is going through people people want to start their own connection to a healer and they're trying to discern you know whether they want to go to this one and that because we're so available on skype and the rest of it right now what are some good things that someone should be asking a healer prior to exchanging money or signing up for their six-month program how does someone determine what modality or what healer take us there let's have a discussion about that well i think that resonance is one of the most important things. And that is not a question 
per se, but it's an energy. It's a vibration. It's like when you meet someone and you have that instant attraction to, it's that kind of energy that there's something that draws you in. Listen to their words, certainly. Listen to the energy around their words. Um, and be willing to be surprised as well, because we like us humans, we like to have everything worked out and, and the conscious mind wants to know, but the spiritual self and the unconscious, they're working with so much more information than what our conscious mind has access to. So please be willing to be surprised. Sometimes it's something about that person that really draws you in, like their voice or like their presence, right? There's just something that you're wanting to activate in yourself that they're radiating for you. I do think that healers come in all shapes and sizes and experience and skill set. And, you know, some of them have different um, intentions with their, their healing or different, um, expressions of it. So I think that uh, when you do find that person, it's almost like an inner click, right? That you just, I know for myself, I just know when I meet someone and I want to work with them. Agreed. Don't you think too, that because of our evolution and i do mean like you know the light workers we're not woo woo anymore we're we're on so many different platforms we're speaking our truth we're you know doing healings and schools are opening and doing meditations i mean we really have come so far it's a good good point to say that i think the people too have become a lot more savvy <laughs> and understanding energy and there's more information out there and so people get a sense of a bad boundary right away and they they can discern a little bit quicker because I think our profession has gotten cleaned up. Yeah, I think right. I, I personally would stay, um, I don't know if that's a good way to put it. I personally would be a little cautious around a healer that is trying to fix me. Um, I would definitely be looking for someone who can listen, who would hold the space, and most importantly, who believes, who believes that some, there's something better for me, that there's belief in their own skill set, belief in spirit, that, you know, the things that I can't see, that they can hold the space for that for me until I can see it. I love that. I think in addition to that, they have to be walking the walk in the vibration of healing and stuff. You can't have somebody who's not walking the walk, making an attempt to heal you. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're missing that congruency, right? You're missing that congruency. The other thing um, would be that they need to be willing to learn, mm -hmm. willing to learn themselves. I learn something from almost every client I have. You know, the wisdom is always in the room, even though I might not be consciously aware of it at the time. But I get such amazing suggestions from my spirit guides, their <laughs> higher self, that it comes together and we both win then it's not me fixing you it's a journey where we're both growing and evolving well that's going to lead me right into the one of the last questions which is <clears throat> here we are transitioning and just for fun where do you think our healing is heading <laughs> as we you know evolve in the right you know will we have a physical body what, what do you think intuitively is the future of our healing just for fun well the future is endless right so i think i think the next place that we really need to step into is into that place of compassion and allowing 
And once we step into that, there's going to be a whole new doorway open to some things that we can't even imagine. I love Wonderful that. things. So let me say it back a different way, but the same thing. Imagine that every healer today, if you're a healer and you're watching this, imagine that everybody that comes into your experience in the next month and a half, that all you need to do is just meet them where they are and love them where they are and sit with them where they are and be with them where they are and do nothing to change it because they are where they are. And if we just fed everybody compassion, then we could move into another experience, right? And is that, is that the energy of what you're saying? Because it's beautiful. It's, I could listen to you all day, Jeannie, really, because you like day. you could be my interpreter. It's a beautiful way to imagine the future of the world. Remember, our thoughts create. And before we can get to that place, we need to change our minds, yeah. really. We need to change the minds, the thoughts that trigger the emotions and the energy that holds those thoughts in place. But as we do our work mm -hmm. and kind of clear up the mind, clear up the energy, clear up those old stagnant emotions, the light that's already within us can radiate. Love it. Mm. What a beautiful conversation we've had today. You know, we've been talking offline for a little bit, and I really wanted to highlight you today. It's okay that you're totally in the light today. I want to love and support you. Is there anything that I have forgotten or that you, this is your chance to stand on top of the mountain and scream, right, for yourself? Is there anything that I've missed that you want to make sure people know about you or an open invitation or what would you like to end our interview with today? I would really, really like to encourage people to remember there's magic all around us. We just need to open our minds and we'll find it. There's so much magic in my life because I believe that it's possible. Yeah. That's how I remolecularize water, coffee, tea, and it works on the replay. Like that's crazy. It's just ridiculous and wonderful and amazing. And we can have magical things like that in our lifetimes, synchronicities, things popping up just when we need it. The support and the love of the universe, whether that's energetically or someone shows up in our life just when we need them. I mean, it all works together like this giant tapestry. Or listening to an amazing video on healing, right people? <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. I'm really happy. And you know what that means? You know what that means? We get to slide into the music's kicking up. We get to do our beautiful rapid fire, which is my favorite way to end an interview. And I get to say thank you. And to everybody who's watching, all the links are absolutely in this post. And I can't wait to share more of Linda Lang. I'm sure there'll be a part two um, down the road because we both have so much we want to share with the world right so are you ready what is your favorite movie a forest gum oh me too you're going to change the world here's your moment you're on the top of the mountain still what does the world need in order to be changed an open heart chakra and a direct connection with spirit love that we all have pet peeves what what is a pet peeve that you have drives me wonky when people say they want change, but don't really want change. They want the world to change, but they're not willing to change. We all have beautiful qualities about ourselves that we admire. What is something you love about yourself? I have a crazy sense of humor. And what are you doing when you're experiencing pure joy? Experiencing such gratitude for all the blessings in my life. Hey. Thank you, everybody, for listening, watching. Linda and I are both on Mesh Media right now, so we'll put that plug out to Mesh Media, joining that platform, YouTube, podcast, you name it, links are below. We totally appreciate the audience, because without you, we're just two talking heads looking at a green dot, right? Linda, thank you so much, and we'll be doing some more work together. I love you. Thank you, Jamie, and thank you for listening. Bye, guys. Oh.
Ah, I'm spitting on my word. Ah, we do. Okay. I forgot to hold on. <laughs> stay, stay, stay. Okay.